In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to graph numbers on a number line. We're going to go over integers, decimal numbers, fractions, and even square roots. So let's go ahead and begin. So let's plot 0, positive 3, and negative 4. zero is right in the middle of the number line so let's start with that now positive three positive integers are on the right side of the number line negative integers are on the left side so to plot positive three we just need to count three units to the right now negative four that's going to be on the left side so we need to count four units to the left of zero. And so negative four will be here. So that's how we can plot integers on a number line. Now, let's talk about plotting decimal numbers. So let's plot positive 0.5, 2.3, and negative 3.6. By the way, feel free to pause the video if you want to try this yourself. So let's do this one step at a time. Let's start with the first number, 0.5. So let's put 0 here and 1. 0.5 is right in the middle of 0 and 1. So 0.5 is going to be right there. It's the midpoint of 0 and 1. Now let's plot 2.3. So let's put 0 here because I'm going to need a lot of space on the right side. 2.3 is in the middle between, well, not in the middle, but it's somewhere between 2 and 3. So let's say this is 1, 2, and this is 3. So 2.3 is somewhere in this region. Now what we need to do is we need to make 10 equal spaces. Now my drawing is not perfect, but we'll work with this. Once you have 10 equal spaces, which is basically nine lines between two and three, all you got to do is count to 2.3. So this is 2.1, I mean, that's 2.0 rather, 2.0, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. .2 so this is where 2.3 is located on the number line. Now, while we have this number line, let's say if we want to plot 2.8. All we need to do is continue counting towards 2.8. So this is going to be 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2 2.7, 2.8. So that's how we can plot a decimal number on a number line. Now let's plot negative 3.6. So that's going to be to the left of 0 because we're dealing with a negative number. So let's put 0 here. This is going to be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So negative 3.6 is somewhere between negative 3 and negative 4. Now, since this number is rounded to the 10th place, let's put 9 lines so we can get 10 equal spaces between negative 3 and negative 4. So that's negative 3.1. 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, and then 4. So negative 3.6 is going to be right here. Now let's say if we want to plot point 35 on a number line. How can we do that? 
Well, we know point 35 is between 0 and 1. And so let's break this down into 10 equal spaces. So we have point 1, point 2, point 3, point 4, and point 5. Now, point 3, 5 is the midpoint of point 3 and point 4. So it's going to be right in between those two numbers. So that's where we can plot point 35. So that's a basic introduction into plotting decimal numbers. Now what about fractions? Let's talk about how we can plot fractions. So let's plot 2 over 3, 11 over 4, and negative 8 over 5. So let's start with 2 over 3. Notice that the numerator, 2, is less than the denominator, 3. So what that means is that this fraction is less than 1. It's between 0 and 1 since it's positive. So if we put 0 here, the 1 is going to be over here. Now notice that the denominator is 3. So we're going to break the number line from 0 to 1 into 3 equal parts. To do that, we're going to put two lines between 0 and 1. So 1, 2. So 0 is equivalent to 0 over 3. The next one is 1 over 3. This is 2 over 3. And 1 is equivalent to 3 over 3. So we can just simply count the numerators from 0 to 3. And 2 over 3 is right here. So basically, you're taking two steps towards the right out of a total of three steps. So it's 2 out of 3. You can see it that way as well. So that's how we can plot 2 over 3 on a number line. Now, let's try the next example, 11 over 4. Before we plot this on a number line, let's turn 11 over 4 from an improper fraction into a mixed number. It's an improper fraction because the numerator 11 is greater than the denominator 4. So we need to do long division. How many times does 4 go into 11? 4 goes into 11 two times. 4 times 2 is 8. And if we subtract 11 by 8, we get 3. So 11 over 4 is equal to 4. I take that back. It's equal to 2 and 3 fourths as a mixed number. Another way you could see this is you can break down 11 over 4 into 8 over 4 plus 3 over 4. 11 is 8 plus 3. And you want to choose 8 because 8 is a multiple of 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So you have 2 plus 3 over 4, which is 2 and 3 fourths. So that's another way in which you can convert an improper fraction into a mixed number. So now let's plot it on, on a number line. So we have 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now 2 and 3 fourths is between 2 and 3. Notice the denominator, 4. So we need 4 equal spaces. So let's put 3 lines between 2 and 3. So this part, this is 0 over 4, 1 over 4, 2 over 4, 3 over 4, and 4 over 4, if you add 2 to it as well. So 2 and 3 fourths is going to be right here. It's equal to 2.75 as a decimal. All right, so now let's move on to the next example. Negative 8 over 5. 
So let's ignore the negative number for now. Let's convert 8 over 5 into a mixed number. So let's do long division. How many times does 5 go into 8? 5 goes into 8 one time. 5 times 1 is 5, and 8 minus 5 is 3. So we get a remainder of 3. So we have 1 as our integer. 3 is going to be the numerator. And the number by which we try to divide it by, 5, that's going to be, it's going to remain in the denominator. So 8 over 5 is 1 and 3 fifths. Now you can see it this way as well. 8 over 5 is 5 over 5 plus 3 over 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. 5 divided by itself is 1. And 1 plus 3 fifths can be written as 1 and 3 fifths. So now that we have our mixed number, let's go ahead and plot it. And keep in mind, it's negative 8 over 5. So we need to focus on the left side. So let's put 0 there. So negative 1 and 3 fifths, that's between negative 1 and negative 2. So let's say this is negative 1, and this is negative 2. Now we have a 5 in the denominator of the fraction. So we need five equal spaces, which means we need to write or draw four lines between negative one and negative two. So those are the four lines. And as you can see, this is, is the first space, second, third, fourth, fifth. So we have five equal spaces between negative one and negative two. Now, out of those five equal spaces, we need to travel three spaces towards the left. So one, two, three. So this is going to be negative one, three fifths, or negative eight over five. Here's another way you could see it. Let's draw our four lines or five equal spaces between 0 and negative 1. So this here is 0 over 5. This is negative 1 over 5, negative 2 over 5, negative 3 over 5, negative 4 over 5, negative 5 over 5, 6 over 5, negative 7 over 5, and then negative 8 over 5. But once you have the mixed number, starting from negative 1, you travel three spaces to the right out of the five spaces that you could travel towards negative two. So there's many ways in which you can uh, see it. So now that we've talked about how to graph integers, decimal numbers, and fractions on a number line, let's talk about square roots. So let's plot the following numbers. The square root of four the square root of negative 9, the square root of 2, and negative square root 7. Now the square root of 4, we can simplify that to 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So this is where we can put the square root of 4, on the same spot as 2, since they equal each other. Now what about negative square root 9? The square root of 9 is 3. So negative root 9 is going to be negative 3. So this is where we can plot negative square root 9. So that's the first thing you want to check to see if you could simplify the square root value into an integer like 2 or negative 3 because then it becomes very easy to plot on a number line. But other times, you can't really simplify it into an integer. For instance, the square root of 2. That's not a nice round integer. Now, there's some graphical techniques that you can use to graph it, but 
on a test, the easiest thing to do is just plug this in the calculator and you should get approximately 1.4. It's like 1.414. So this is 0, 1, 2, 1.4 is just under 1.5. So it's like around this area. So that would be the square root of 2. Now what about the square root of 7? The square root of 7 is between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. The square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 9 is 3. So square root 7 is somewhere between 2 and 3. Now we're dealing with negative square root 7. So this is going to be between negative 2 and negative 3. So let's say that's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So it's somewhere in this region. So that's how you can kind of figure out where it is on a number line without a calculator. But to really get a nice point, to really place it at the right spot, you, it's good to use a calculator. The square root of 7 is 2.64575. So we can round that to approximately 2.65. Now we know 2.5 is between 2 and 3, so negative 2.65 is going to be to the left of negative 2.5. So somewhere in that region, we can say is approximately negative square root 7. So that's one way in which you can graph irrational square root numbers. And that's basically it for this video. So hopefully you found it useful. If you did, feel free to comment in the sections below. Thanks again for watching.